their situation happens to be compelling because we have, you know, uh, folks that live here but are stuck in a really dangerous situation. And again, if this were something that was happening in America, our response to it would be very different. And so in on our list of students to, to contact, they were number one because we heard the rumblings of political unrest uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, it would have been the middle of August and called the family, the father uh, with whom I already had somewhat of a relationship and then didn't hear from him in a few days and then shot him an email because I knew he had been, we, we had gone back and forth from email and that's when he told me that they were stuck in, in Afghanistan. Um, he said, I just said, hello, this is Mr. McGill from Baker. I came by the house today to see if you all are back in the States. Are you all home? Send my best to the kids. And he said, we're stuck in Afghanistan and the Taliban have captured the whole country. We're trying to reach the Kabul airport uh, and get the USA Air Force plane, but they didn't allow us. God save us. As the 31st approached, it became clearer and clearer that, that it was less safe for them each day and that for whatever reason, um, the, their experience at the airport in Kabul was really unsafe. And while you know, worldwide media was saying, oh sure, get aboard these planes, <clears throat> they were not being prioritized even though they were green card holders. And for whatever reason, the family, because they couldn't get that to that, to that spot or because they were traveling with folks who were not green card holders but wanted to escape as well, they were turned away repeatedly. And then a few times, you know, violent, gunfire, you know, tear gas, all of that. When I get up at five, it's like smack dab in the middle of like their early evening there. So that we would be messaging in the morning uh, and then kind of throughout the day until 11 o'clock at night there, which would be midday here. Uh, but recently, so probably in the last week or so, week and a half, as they've had to shelter in different places, one parent is staying awake and the other is sleeping and then they're switching, trading off shifts so that they can stay rest but also um, be uh, vigilant, right, in case Taliban come to their house. So there's always a parent awake. So if one's not responsible, I'll just text the other one. They're not messages of, of hope in the last week, 10 days. It's been, it's been really grim, really grim. That's the question I would want folks to ask is, how might that family be doing? How might the six-year-old be doing? And if you have a six-year-old, how would your six-year-old be doing in that situation, right? Because I have an eight-year-old and I have a 10-year-old, and I know that four weeks away, um, like those kids there, those are our kids. That's, what we ha that's how we have to think. They can't be doing well. And so it's like when they return, the amount of service and mental health services and love and connection that we're gonna pour back into them, it's gonna, be, it's gonna take a while. Not to mention they're like four weeks behind on their homework. It was from Huma, who just had a panic attack, by the way, like this week. She said, day by day I'm worried for their health because they're losing weight, talking about the kids. And I asked him if she thought the stress was causing them not to be hungry. Um, but, you know, I was just reminding her of how tough they are. I use the word strong because they've been able to survive this. And, you know, she said, they're the reason why I'm feeling strong. Um, and she said, without them, I would have already lost my mind. And she said, sir, you know, if you saw the Taliban threats, uh, it's, it's incredibly scary. Um, and then she said, yes, yeah, sir, uh, just yesterday, they cut the head off of a government employer, employee and threw his body in the river, right? Um, people found it and took photos and shared it on social media. Right, so it's Saturday at 10 o'clock here in Sacramento. I'm doing my whatever Saturday thing looks like that is nothing like her reality. And it was that stark contrast, again, those moments where if you were in that similar situation, how would you be, right? Would you, that's, that's how like amazing these people are. Would you be even able to text somebody and tell them what's going on and be able to tell their story, right? That what we know about, about traumatic response is that, you know, fight, flight, or freeze, well, they're, they're maintaining, they're coping, right? Some other folks in their same situation, probably even constituents here, they're fleeing or they are freezing and they are, they are in that traumatic state. That's, the, the family is like um, operating under conditions that would otherwise, I think, shut down normal human beings.